Good afternoon, YouTube. I was taking a closer look at this 1895 historical topo map from USGS. So I was trying to see if I could find any information on these names here. There was Henry Gannett, who was the chief topographer, and then this fellow here, Richard Good, was the geographer in charge, and then topography was by a fellow named Robert Marshall. And then it said here, triangulation by the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey. They probably had these teams of the Coastal and Geodetic Survey people bringing their survey data back. And then these three people here were in charge of putting them together into a single map. So I started searching here. The first guy is Henry Gannett, and he was a famous geographer. Yes, yeah, so right here, who was Henry Gannett? He is often called the father of American map making, one of the founding members of the National Geographic Society. And then I guess he got into mapping when he went out to the Yellowstone region. Apparently, he then eventually lobbied for centralizing the country's mapping functions into a government agency, and that was the USGS was officially formed, and he was the first geographer of the United States. Yeah, so he was around until 1914 and quite a list of uh, accomplishments in his career. So that was this Henry Gannett, who was listed as the chief topographer. So he was probably in charge of the entire mapping project. And then this second guy here, Richard Good. And he was uh, born 1858 in Virginia. And then he joined the Army Corps of Engineers, 1877, worked on the Transcontinental Railroad Survey, and he joined the U.S. Geological Survey in 1884. In 1888, he uh, actually worked on the Panama Canal Project for a couple of years, and then came back in 1889, joined the USGS, and he was in charge of the surveys of the three Pacific Coast states, California, Oregon, and Washington. And then there's this fellow, Robert Marshall, and he was, worked with USGS, and then in 1908 became the chief geographer for USGS. He was very instrumental in creating the idea of the Central Valley Water Project. He wrote uh, quite a few articles talking about surveying in North Carolina. This one was surveying in Kentucky. Yeah, a lot of interesting things you can find out about reading these old uh, maps. Just this little bit of text in the corner. You have to realize 1895, they were doing all this survey work either on foot or on horseback most likely and they probably had teams of a couple of people with all the manual surveying, you know, transits and theodolites and chains and rods and all the th stuff to do the triangulation. So this was all done by hand, you know, looking through instruments, trying to get elevations and angles and distances and put together a map like this. And at the time, in the 1890s, having a map like this, so a real topo map, was probably just an incredible thing for someone to have if they were trying to explore out in this country. You know, having a map that showed where all the streams and hills and slopes and canyons were was probably just, you know, a modern marvel. When I first started working with this map, I was literally looking at it on my home computer, trying to study a particular area of the map, see what was there, and then I would go off on a bike ride and try to find something that was on the map, or vice versa, I would see something on a bike ride, and then I would come back to this map at home and try to see if I could find 
what it was that I saw on a particular ride. And then I finally figured out how to get the map loaded into the Avenza Maps program on Android. And all of a sudden, I could do this. You could see this 125-year-old map on your device with live GPS tracking data, the full coordinates, show your location, it would orient with the compass and show you basically exactly where you were. That was just mind-blowing when I got all that connected. It was just like, wow. The one problem you'll see here is the center of this circle is where I was standing when I did this screenshot. And I knew where I was standing because I was on that part of this road. The GPS showed me up here. And that's something on the order of about 100 yards, maybe even 200 yards off. So these old topo maps are not terribly accurate. So that's something you have to work with. And at the time, I was just kind of figuring that out. You know, it's like... I know I'm right here. I walked up this road to the first switchback and it's telling me I'm way up here and I knew I wasn't way up there. So that's some of the limitations of these maps, but given that limitation, it's just amazing having this in your hand. You can just imagine what these three people would think of being able to do this with their map that they created 125 years ago. Just amazing. And yeah, that's, that is pretty neat. So like I said, this is a Venza Maps. This is the free version. And I've downloaded the map and activated it for offline use. Because up in this area, there's no data connection. All you get is low resolution GPS signal, that's the circle, is the uncertainty. So the, the GPS signal down in this canyon is not very good, and then the maps are also not very good. So it's a little bit hard to use them, but having this capability in your hands is really neat. If you have any questions about that, post up in the comment section below. Stay tuned for future videos, and we're, we'll be going up and down the, this area here and up this way, looking for signs of these old roads, and see what's left. And as always, thanks for watching.